Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and we have some big news this week. Sergio Garcia has rejoined Team TaylorMade. Now Sergio obviously has been with Adidas and had been with TaylorMade for most of his career and then left kind of at the end of 2017. He went with Callaway for a little bit and he's actually been a bit of a free agent the last kind of year or two. And now he is back with TaylorMade. Quite a unique story and we actually have a interview with Sergio to go through and understand why he has rejoined Team TaylorMade for his pretty much full what's in the bag and golf ball. So let's dive straight in guys. So first of all, Sergio Garcia, currently ranked 46th in the world, has 11 PGA Tour titles, 16 European Tour titles, including the, and also obviously won the 2017 Masters with TaylorMade Golf Clubs, by the way. So it was quite unusual that, you know, he got picked off and left TaylorMade after that, but you'd have to think he probably got offered quite a bit of money after he was pretty much at his career high after winning the 2017 Masters. And by the way, guys, it is important to mention that uh, TaylorMade actually picked off another free agent at the beginning of this year and that was obviously Tommy Fleetwood who had been a free agent ever since I think he used to be with Nike and you know had been a free agent ever since then and they have now got Tommy Fleetwood on their books as well so guys this is a Golf Digest article all about with an interview with Sergio asking him what the primary reason was and a whole bunch of questions so let's dive in so first of all, first question, congratulations on the homecoming with TaylorMade. What was the primary, re primary reason behind your decision to re-up with them? He said, uh, Sergio said, it's quite simple. I've been a part of TaylorMade family for 15 years before parting at the end of 2017. It's where I've been the most comfortable and where I've had the most confidence and it's where I played my best golf. I love the equipment, but also the people that work there. So it was a simple decision. So I would probably say from that, you know, I from what I heard, I don't think the decision when he left TaylorMade, you know, I don't think TaylorMade were particularly happy with it because he had been there for so long. They obviously wanted to keep him, but he was probably offered, I'm guessing, more money with the likes of Callaway and some other brands. So the next question, did you enjoy being an equipment free agent for a while or does it create an atmosphere where maybe you have some variables you'd prefer not to have? And Sergio said, to be totally honest, I did enjoy a little bit of the freedom just to see what was out there and kind of pick and choose without having to give explanations to anyone. But at the same time, I found myself even, even as a free agent going back to having 10 or 12 tailor-made clubs and the golf ball in the bag so it made sense to talk to them and see if there was a way we could get back together so it kind of sounds like Sergio was using tailor-made clubs anyway and if you're using a certain brand anyway and you're one of the well he's in the top 50 in the world best golfers why wouldn't you be sponsored by them you're just going to be getting more money for yourself and making life a bit easier for yourself so kind of makes sense there he obviously was a free agent for a while he was in Callaway for a while so he's obviously tested out a lot of equipment and if he came back to having you know tailor-made clubs in his bag anyway then why wouldn't you rejoin we are going to be going through Sergio's golf bag by the way guys as well I'll be giving you a full what's in the bag with his golf bag as well uh, so the TP5 and TP5X balls have developed a solid reputation how big a role did the ball play in your decision to come back to TaylorMade it was massive, not only for me, but I think if you ask most tour pros, the golf ball is the biggest part of the equipment equation and makes the biggest impact in your game. Playing the right or wrong ball can make a huge impact. 
Not kind of surprising there when you really think about it, it would be the biggest uh, part of your golf equipment because it's the only part of your golf equipment you're using every single shot. It kind of makes sense that you want to have the right golf ball. There's some other things Sergio goes on to say that I'm gonna go through with you guys in a second to do with this that really had me kind of thinking a bit more about why it's so important. So. How do you go about ball test about testing golf balls, and what is the one box that ball has to check before you're ready to put it into play, and how long does that process usually take? Funny enough, it doesn't take very long for me. There's always a couple of things you want. You look at the numbers and spin rates to make sure the ball is going where you think it should be going, but for me, it's mostly feel. I've always been very much a feel player, and if I hit the golf ball and feel it should have done something, and it does, then I know I'm in good shape. The problems come when I feel like I hit a shot a certain way, and the ball doesn't do what I feel. And he goes on a little bit to explain that a bit more. And to be honest, I can kind of relate to that a little bit because it, for if you've ever been at the driving range and you've been working on your swing, sometimes you'll get a really funny ball that like you're like, you've made a good swing, you hit it a certain way, or you think it should be a fade or a draw. And sometimes the ball, especially I'm using range balls as, as an example because they're obviously not the highest standard of golf balls and you just get more of extremes with them but sometimes a range ball will come out and you'll think you'll just look at the ball flight and it just doesn't make sense you're like that ball should not have done that it might die out the air it might curve one way it might have a weird whistling sound to it whatever it is so obviously he's talking a little bit about more fine margins here but you know still still can kind of relate to that a little bit maybe probably not to his specific uh standards so the next question was your career dates back to wound balata golf balls and even some of the early tailor-made balls what's the difference in your ball testing process today versus back then and is it easier today because the balls are so consistent or is it more difficult because the balls are so sl are so slight. He says, it's different from back then. You had to swing differently than you do now to be able to get the most out of the ball. I'm swinging up a lot more now than I used to. The way I grew up swinging with the wound ball was more down. If you went up, the ball would balloon into the wind. The balls are more consistent now, but you have to swing the right way to get the most out of the ball and the equipment and that's not always easy if you learn how to play the game one way and then have to switch it around. Once you start swinging that way it's probably easier to find the ball that works best for you. Now that kind of got me thinking and you know a little bit about attack angles how important it is to have a consistent attack angle to really get the most out of the ball for you. Similarly to if you're getting fit for golf clubs, you kind of want to get custom fit for golf clubs when your swing is at a fairly consistent place. Even if it's not perfect, as long as it's consistent, then you're gonna get the most out of that custom fitting process. And, and Sergio actually says in a second, we're gonna get onto it, some very, very interesting things about his clubs which I personally had never ever thought about before. So let's keep going. You're currently using the Sim Woods. Any plans to test the Sim 2 Woods and might those find their way into your bag anytime soon? So Joe says, I played with them at the beginning of the year a little bit and got some last week, which I've done some work with. I'll keep working on it. I have a couple of Sim 2 Max Woods, but want to make sure I get in some good work with the tailor-made tour reps to make sure they're properly dialed in. Once we get there, it'll go in play. I've always been quite easy about those things, and as soon as something feels good, I'm not afraid to put it into play. So obviously, tailor-made with sponsoring Sergio, they're gonna want him to be using the latest equipment, so I would probably think it says in his contract somewhere that he may have a month to find some clubs that work for him. He might have a certain time period where they want him to be using all of the latest equipment, 
wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. But for now, Sergio seems like he's found some Sim Woods that are working well for him. And he's found some Sim 2 Max Woods, which he might be putting into play very soon. So the next question is what really interested me about the custom fitting process with Sergio. So the question is, I see that you still counterweight your full swing clubs. 30 grams in the woods and 20 grams in the irons, which is something you've done for some time. What does the counterweight provide you? So if you don't know what the counterweight is, it's weight going in at the kind of grip section of the club, the top section, not the, uh, not the head. Uh, so he says, I've been doing this since 2005. The way my swing is, I have quite a bit of lag which is great because it provides me a lot of power and smoothness in the swing. But if you're not careful, the ball can spin too much. I like heavy clubs, but if the club gets too head heavy, I tend to lose it a little bit behind me because of the lag. And it's difficult to get the club in front of me to hit proper shots. What we found was that by counterbalancing the clubs, the clubs are still heavy but the swing weight is lighter. That makes it easier to get the club head in front of me because the club is more balanced and not so head heavy. So according to Taylor May, Gar Taylor Sergio Garcia's clubs start at a D4 swing weight but move to a C7 after being counterbalanced. So basically they're moving more weight into the top section of the club, the grip and that sort of area. That was really interesting to me, to listen to him talk about the relationship between the lag in his golf swing and the adjustments they've made to his golf clubs because of that. I was pretty surprised. I'd never thought about it that way. Because I personally, I quite like heavy golf shafts. I quite like heavy shafts in my golf clubs. And I like heavy shafts in my golf clubs because in transition, if I have quite light clubs, I feel like my transition gets quite quick. If I have heavier clubs, I feel there's a bit more resistance at the top of the golf swing and I get to let the weight of the club drop a little bit more personally. That's how it feels for me. So I, but I had never really considered counterweighting with the clubs before. I had I re I did a fit a custom fitting with PXG a few years ago, probably three or three or four years ago now, where the, I did a custom fitting with them, and at that time I had a very thick Jumbo Max grip on my driver shaft, and the fitter, a really nice guy called um, Matt, he does a lot of the custom fitting for PXG. He basically explained to me that because the grip was so big and it was heavier, it was counterbalancing my driver where I wasn't able to release it properly and my drives were coming out quite low. And that was really interesting for me. Now, bear in mind that Jumbo Max actually make lighter grips now because of this issue. They actually, because their grips are bigger, they've started making their grips much lighter to uh, basically fix that issue. So, but I bet you, if any of you have ever had a custom fitting where they have contemplated or messed around with counterbalancing your clubs, I would love to hear it because I have never had anything like that. And I would be surprised if anyone watching this has ever had a custom fitting with that level of detail. I would be surprised, but please comment down below, let me know, I'd love to know. So there's a few more questions. Over the years, you've gone back and forth between blades and irons with a bit of muscle cavity, and you have tailor-made P750 irons in the bag now. What do you look for in an iron? There's a couple things. I don't like thick irons, so the top line and leading edge need to be thin looking. I usually also don't go with big cavity backs, the P750s, just have a little bit. I feel like I struggle to be consistent with my spin with a big cavity back iron. Usually with them, I spin them too much and struggle into the wind. The P750s aren't blades, but they play like them, which is a good combination for me. I would, I would have to personally agree with that. I think whatever iron I'm using, whether it's a blade, a cavity back, 
I, lo I love a thin top line. It just suits my eye perfectly. And, you know, also those P750s he's currently got in the bag, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into some of the newer tailor-made irons soon. Um, yeah, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, uh, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So the next question, they're allowing range finders this week at the PGA, if you, if you aren't aware about that, they are allowing range finders. What are your thoughts on that and will you and your caddy be using one? I haven't thought about it much and have to talk to my caddy, his uh, name is Glenn Murray, about it and see if we will or not. Whatever you can do to make the game quicker and more enjoyable is a positive. It doesn't bother me a bit if we use it or not. We have our yardage books and even if we use the range finder this week, we need to know the carry over the bunkers and things like that. We still need those numbers and those are difficult to get with the range finder. So I'm probably going to do a whole different video on this range finders versus not on the PGA Tour because it's quite an interesting argument. There's positives and negatives to it. Um, very interesting to that. I think the thing is, I'll go into more detail in this in a separate video, but I will just say that I do agree it makes the game quicker and easier, and I 100% agree with what he said there. And you do still need to know your distances over bunkers, so rangefinders don't fix all the problems for you. Um, and to be honest, PJ Tour players, like, their caddies get it pretty dialed in anyway with the distances. So a rangefinder, I, like, I think the caddies do a good job anyway. So, yeah, that I'll go into that more in a separate video. Uh, what's the last golf club you spent your own money on? It's quite an interesting question because most Tour pros, even if they are free agents, they get their clubs for free. He says, that's a good question, it's been a while. As a young amateur, I remember the first tailor-made driver that was metal, and it had the little dots on the back. The tailor-made tour preferred Burner Plus. I bought one of those, and I remember being very, very excited about it. My dad was a head pro, so he gave me clubs growing up and I didn't have to pay for them but I remember that being the last one so it's been a while so he hasn't paid for clubs in a long time but that is quite interesting and you have to admit you know with clubs having changed materials quite a bit from wood to metal to different types of metal to now kind of carbon fiber and titanium and those sorts of things um, yeah, you would be excited if a golf club came out tomorrow and it was a completely different kind of material that was supposed to be way better, we'd all be super excited and just handing over our money. Um, how important is it to you to make the Ryder Cup team? He says, it's very important for me, it's the number one goal. We have three majors to go and those also are very important, but I know if I play well in the majors, I'll have a good chance of being on the Ryder Cup team. It's definitely something I really want to be part of. Yeah, I, I mean, Sergio, iconic Ryder Cup player. Absolutely, I mean, he's, he, you know, all the Spanish players get pretty passionate and heated, and it's great to see them in the Ryder Cup, so let's hope he does make that team. And then there's a little bit more where they go into Sergio's golf bag. But I'm going to leave that for another video, guys. I'm probably going to do that video over the next few days. So if you do want to know exactly what's in Sergio's, what's in the bag, and the clubs he's using, stick around. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment your thoughts down below. And... Also, I will be doing another separate video on the rangefinder debate with them being in play this week. Quite an interesting topic. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's certainly interesting. It's great to kind of get Sergio's own feedback on it. I think probably what has happened over the last few years, Sergio won the Masters at the peak of his, you know, kind of his, well, maybe not peak of his career, but, you know, playing some of his best golf having won the Masters, got poached by another brand, probably offered a lot more money. 
Um, maybe whatever, for whatever reason, maybe with him not having done so well the last few years, things ended with that brand resulted in him being a free agent. And with him then having gone back to mostly tailor-made clubs, it only makes sense for both parties to be an official tailor-made representative with him being sponsored by them now. I'd also love to know if you guys had to be sponsored by one golf brand, who would it be? Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway, Cobra, uh, Mizuno, all of these guys, great brands, get great products. So yeah, let me know, comment your thoughts down below and like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching guys. As always, grip it and rip it.